Greetings to you, my dear brothers and sisters. I am here once again with yet another word of encouragement for you, especially if you have been mocked by a lot of people. If people have been saying all sorts of negative words towards you, this is your word. Some of you, they have been whispers, rumors about you, things which are not right. Some of you, you have heard information that ha does not add up. You have been brought up to courts of law. Some of you have been accused of things that you have not done. But I want to encourage you with this powerful word that is going to really uplift you. Brothers and sisters, before we kick into this word, I would like you to subscribe, turn on all the notifications so that you may never ever miss out on these amazing words. Remember that every single week I am here live. I have live streams where I pray for people, where I speak words of direction into people's lives. And there are a lot of people that have come out with testimonies, countless testimonies of how God has done amazing things over their lives. Your next big breakthrough could be right in the live stream that we are going to make. So it is important that you get connected. Today's amazing word is God will silence the mouth of the accuser. God will silence the accuser. The mockers will be silenced. The haters will be put down. Those that have falsely attacked you, falsely accused you, will be put to shame. Do you know there are people that attack you without a cause? There are people who have been around you, attacking you, stealing from you without a cause. It's not that you did them anything wrong. They just enjoy causing trouble to you. This time around, things are going to backfire. The enemy will flee when no one chases him. Brothers and sisters, allow me to read to you a scripture that is from the book of Samuel. Of course, First Samuel chapter 1, verse 1 to 7. The book of First Samuel chapter 1, verse 1 to 7. The Bible clearly says, There was a certain man from Ramathahim, a Zophite, from the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah, son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zu, this of an Ephraimite. He had two wives. One was called Hannah, the other Penina. Penina had children, while Hannah had none. Af year after year, this man went up from his town to worship and sacrifice to the Lord Almighty at Shiloh, where Hophni and Phinehas, the two sons of Eli, were priests of the Lord. Whenever the day came for Elkanah to sacrifice, he would give portions of meat to his wife, Penina, and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he would give double portion because he loved her and the Lord had closed her womb. Because the Lord had closed Hannah's womb, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. The, in order to irritate her, this went on year after year. Whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival provoked her till she wept and would not eat. What a powerful word. A story is told about a woman that was barren. And the Bible says that the Lord had closed her womb. The Lord had closed Hannah's womb. Some of you, that problem, God could have done it just to help you. I'm telling you. Of course, most of the problems, it is the enemy that causes them. But for Hannah's case, the Lord closed her womb to open up a door for her. 
Mm, it's a powerful word. What you may think as tragedy, what you may think as a problem, God could have closed that door to open up a huge door for you. And I, I'm going to tell you what door God opened up for Anna. You see, while her womb was closed, she was mocked. It seems as though she was suffering. Penina mocked her. Penina laughed at her. Penina abused her because she was her rival. She did not have kids. There are people that have abused you. People that have mocked you. Actually, some of you don't have children. Some of you have kids, but they want to be with the Lord. And people are mocking you. Some of you, it is your relationship. You don't have a spouse and people are mocking you. But I want to tell you, there is something big that the Lord is bringing in your life. When you go ahead to read the story of Hannah, in that she kept on praying. She did not give up. She always went to the temple, to the house of the Lord. Even while she was mocked, she still went and prayed. To the extent that the priest thought that she was drunk. Because at times she would pray. And it's as though her lips were moving, no words were coming out. Have you ever reached to that point where you pray? When your lips are moving, but no words are coming out? She had reached at that level. It was until one day that God opened up her womb. That she gave birth to a son. A prophet who none of his words fell to the ground. When Hannah gave birth to, to her son, we never ever heard about Penina's sons. Oh no, we never heard about them. Even their names, they were not mentioned after that. The Bible says it clear that Samuel anointed kings. He anointed kings. He was destined for greatness. My brothers and sisters, there's something big that God is preparing for you. The, yes, a door may have been closed for a bigger door to open up. That door that was closed, you were not supposed to open it up. God could have prepared for you a bigger door. And listen, Hannah's prayer was Israel's prayer. Hannah's breakthrough was a breakthrough of the entire nation. Israel was waiting for a man like Samuel, the prophet Samuel. They were waiting for a man. The Bible says none of his words fell to the ground. That is a very powerful word. Brothers and sisters, whoever is provoking you, they will face it rough. Because when God opens for you up a door, they will be put to shame. Brothers and sisters, I hope this word has blessed you. I hope it has encouraged you. And remember, if you want to be a blessing to this powerful ministry, you can do so through your giving. You can give through my PayPal. Remember that my PayPal is in the About section. Until next time, God bless you.